Here's a look at what's buzzing in the air. The Metropolitan Mosquito Control District works in the air and on the ground too in seven counties to keep mosquitoes at bay for more than three million people who call this area home. This week we spent some time with Mosquito Control to learn more about what they're doing this time of year to keep you comfortable and safe from mosquitoes that might be out next summer. Reporter Delane Cleveland and photojournalist Adam Jukula bring us this story from the crews working out on mosquito control here in the northwest suburbs. On Minnesota's many bodies of water, you'll find cattails. And this time of year, where there's cattails, there's generally going to be mosquito larvae. They'll lay their eggs in the, you know, the most propitious spot for them to survive the winter and such, typically where there's water. Tony Anderson is a technician with the Metropolitan Mosquito Control District. Water in there. It's his job to scrape the bottom of the cattail roots and find mosquito larvae. We're trying to go down to where we're kind of getting the bottom of the stock and we come right up the stock. If he finds any, mosquito control plans go into place. At the Crystal Airport, crews fill a helicopter with a substance specifically designed to kill mosquito larvae. This is an operation that we do uh, every year, every fall. We try to get in uh, a large chunk of our cattail acreage flown. Uh, so that's just wetlands around the district uh, that are in particular uh, breeding for cattail mosquito larva. On Tuesday alone, the helicopter made 22 different trips around the Northwest Metro, spreading the granules around wetland areas. The goal is to not only help reduce the mosquito population before next summer, but to help limit the spread of disease. If you look at like any sort of old newspapers from like, a, you know, the pre-mosquito controller in the Twin Cities in general, um, it sounds like it was a pretty uh, terrible place to live at certain times in the year. And while any Minnesotan can attest that the mosquito problem is bad, without the work of these crews, things could be a whole lot worse. The customers are the ones that attest that it's made a definitive difference. In Crystal, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. This fall, North Hennepin Community College is bringing the classroom experience into nature with a new immersive program. North Hennepin Community College partnered with Three Rivers Park District to organize an environmental justice and nature immersion program for both students from the college as well as high school students from around the metro. Part of the class involves a hike and seed spreading activity that took place at Eastman Nature Center last weekend. Our class is environmental justice and it's an immersion class to um, get students outside and connected to nature, as well as learning about equity and diversity, um, resources and opportunities for students to get outside. So far, the highlight's definitely been visiting this nature center. It's just great being out in the, uh, being out in the woods and just hearing the sounds, just looking at the little things. Students will head out on a three-day immersion trip at the YMCA Northern Lights Camp at the end of this month. When the students return, they will present their experiences at an event on October 26th. This event will also feature a drum and dance exhibition as well as a documentary screening that will highlight the trip. An elementary school in Plymouth is receiving a special honor for academic achievement. Kimberly Lane Elementary is one of about 300 schools to be named a National Blue Ribbon School. The U.S. Department of Education recognizes schools each year for academic performance or progress in closing racial achievement gaps. Kimberly Lane is one of eight schools in Minnesota to receive the honor. Principal Carrie Wehrman says the award is a testament to everyone at Kimberly Lane. Obviously the teachers, it's the students, it's the families, it's our culinary staff, it's our custodial staff, it's our bus drivers. Um, it is everyone had to come together to make this happen and we've just been so fortunate that we have such a supportive community and people who collaborate with one another and make it a great place for students to learn and for teachers to teach. Wehrman and second grade teacher Greta Sender will attend a ceremony honoring Kimberly Lane in November in Washington, D.C. Hennepin Technical College is celebrating 50 years this year. The school commemorated the event this past week. We're so excited to be celebrating our 50th anniversary. So we have events happening all year. And today we are planting a tree in that celebration and starting a, it's like our students, starting a solid foundation and watching them grow, which we support. 
Hennepin Technical College planted a tree near the cafeteria in honor of its 50th anniversary. The school's landscaping, horticulture and urban forestry academic program facilitated the tree planting. For this week's weekend showcase, we take you to the Robin Gallery to see their current exhibit. The title is Reimagining Landscape. I think the concept of reimagining comes from the idea that we approach how to look at landscape and how to how to speak about it very differently. We're telling a totally different story and one that the viewer maybe has never thought about seeing. Gutierrez Bolger and Suzanne Scan are the two artists featured in this exhibit. Gutierrez Bolger's work is oil, canvas, and collage, and she draws from her experiences growing up in southern Florida as a Cuban refugee to create her art that's described as both real and surreal. It's to say that, um, that we immigrants have a lot to share, and, and you've heard the cliche, you know, write what you know, paint what you know, but it's, it's true. I think it's, it's part of me. The show runs until October 1st at the Robin Gallery. We'll leave you with more art from the show. The Providence Academy boys soccer team has a really good one-two punch in junior Ronan Donahue and senior Ryan Hutt. Jason Malolo profiles the Lions duo in this week's CCX Sports Spotlight. Ronan Donahue and Ryan Hutt, they're just soccer guys, have 18 goals between them this season. Hutt is a converted defender and all of his goals have come in the open field. He's big and strong and I think he could you know, uh, hold off defenders and he's just brilliant. Lev talked to me and said that I should step up and play forward this year because of the guys we have on our roster, that would be the best position for me. Donahue is an attacking midfielder who is arguably the Lions' best all-around player. Technically, tactically, and certainly mentally, you know, a second or two faster than everybody else. Even though he's not the fastest, the biggest kid, and so you see that right away. He started for me when he was an eighth grader because I saw that. He was small, but he could do it. Donahue's journey as a student athlete took him to Spain last winter. He spent the semester at the Aquinas American School in Madrid, studying and playing soccer for the Hatafe Youth Academy. I was playing for the U16s for half of the time I was there, and then they bumped me up to the U19s as I got progressively better. Donahue is fluent in Spanish, but adjusting to the dialect of Madrid was challenging. It was hard to express myself at times because there's some different vocabulary that um, means different things. Playing soccer with guys from all over the world. The Philippines, Australia, different parts of Africa. Donahue had to adapt on the pitch. The people there were a lot more passionate and the speed of play was a lot quicker. And we see them playing one touch, two touch, and kind of being a lot quicker with their footwork. And Donahue's experience at the international level is being noticed by his Providence teammates this fall. He plays at such a fast level and he has great vision and also his technical ability is just unrivaled. Halfway through a tough regular season schedule, the Lions are ranked third in Class A. And despite injuries to a few key players, they're feeling like this team can make a deep playoff run. I really do believe that this is our year. Whoever wins our section is going to win state, period. For the CCX Sports Spotlight, I'm Jason Malillo. Thanks, Jason. Providence tied Minnehaha Academy Thursday, giving the Lions a 6-2-2 record entering the weekend. Playoff girls tennis gets underway in less than two weeks. Two teams who are both part of the Section 5 AA tournament met in a regular season match Thursday. Osseo and Armstrong girls tennis meeting Thursday afternoon in a Northwest Suburban Conference match. Armstrong's Peyton Erickson serving in the number one singles match to Maggie Albers. Erickson will get the nice cross court backhand winner for a point. She goes on to win the match 6-1. Six six First doubles, it's the Orioles' Maya Stroman serving. 
She and Tessa Strand facing Monica Roddy and Emily Nutlin. Strand with the overhand smash winner at the net for a point. The Orioles win this match 6-1, 6-4. Back to singles play with Armstrong's Ariana Shepard in the near court playing Evelyn West. Pretty long rally here between the two. Shepard on the run on this point, but West's last return is long. Shepard goes on to win the match, 6-0, 6-2. Second doubles, Oscos, Kira Nelson and Sarah Mertens facing Armstrong's Evelyn Erickson and Viveka Thomas. Nelson with one volley return before Mertens delivers the winner at the net. Nelson and Mertens win, 6-3, 6-3. Third singles play with Armstrong's Camille LeBerton in the near court against Lindsey Varney. A good rally on this point before LeBerton finally gets a winner. She wins 6-0, 6-0. Armstrong wins all four singles matches while Osseo sweeps the doubles. The Falcons win the match 4-3. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.